Now, if this was someone's pet, then any sane vet would have put it to sleep centuries ago. But it's not the family cat, Fluffy. It's an ancient military-grade transport ship, and it should have been put out of commission back when man first discovered fire. Fresh out of the dustiest of museums, it's been returned to duty instead of melted down to scrap. Someone in the head office has a truly awful sense of humour. My god, is that a Collins-class ship? I, I haven't seen one since vids in preschool. Collins-class? My sensors tell me it's a Phil-class ship. That makes it the granddaddy of the Collins class. They could have at least given it a clean first. Do you think it is going to be able to take off in the air tonight with all that dust and oil on it? Yes, it was low-hanging fruit, but we took it anyway. The team grudgingly board the ship. It's small on the outside, and unsurprisingly, even smaller on the inside, with barely enough room for four people, let alone our five. As soon as the team strap themselves in, the doors close and autopilot kicks in, ready for takeoff. Greetings and salutations, rejects, and welcome to the SS Dirtball. You'll be happy to know that we've programmed this ship so none of you could screw it up and park it on a sun or something stupid like that. If you get thirsty, try the recycled water dispenser in the back. If you get hungry, try the recycled water dispenser in the back. If you get bored, try the recycled water dispenser in the back. Would you look at you, Rook, using your initiative? You'll go far in this army. About as far out as we can point this thing before it runs out of juice. Anyway, sit back and enjoy the ride as much as you can for the next eight hours, and try not to stab each other. If you need anything, just shout. Nothing will happen, of course, but it'll help pass the time. I'll get back to you in a week or so, maybe. It depends on how bored I get, really. The ship blasts off and it takes roughly 60 seconds into the 8 hour trip for boredom to kick in. Unit 6, engage entertainment mode. Music selection, sexy jazz. Sound level, medium. Hey, say what? Don't you have Inbill Entertainment on board? Are you serious? He is not a pleasure droid. Unit 6, give me a report on snacks available. Can you cook a pie? Meat with cheese and bacon please. And no sauce. Engage cooking speed, brisk. Look, you know I'm a soldier, right? Yes, I'm half cyborg, but there's no need to talk to me like I'm a kitchen machine. I'm just as human as you are, which means you can get your own damn pie. So no pie? Okay. So... It's a no to the jazz then, too? How about we find out a little about each other then? After all, we're not going anywhere for the next eight hours. <laughs> um, maybe if we all introduced and shared something about ourselves that very few people know? How does that sound? That's a great idea! I'm Captain Rook. or er, former Captain Rook. As for the thing that very few people know... Uh, I hate confined spaces. Can't stand them. I once got trapped in a very small tunnel with only three swamp rats for company for nine days, and I've never been the same since. So, uh, exactly what happens when you find yourself in a confined space? Well, it depends. Sometimes nothing. Sometimes I lapse into a murderous rage and want to kill everything within reach. Sometimes I just pass a... Well, that was lucky. Right then. I'm Unit 6, a.k.a. Gary, and according to official records, I'm married to 11 different women, two men, and a retired space cruiser. 13 marriages? Is that even legal now? Uh If someone was keen to try this for themselves, how would they go about it? You know, just in case a friend of mine was interested. Purely for research purposes, of course. Well, I don't remember any of them specifically, but I've woken up after a few big nights of drinking with a ring on my finger and a certificate where my wallet should be, so... And, and this has happened 13 times now? Yeah, it's pretty much a given when happy hour is on. I do enjoy my half price beers. Well, my turn now. My name is Catherine Wurtry, and once upon a time, I was a part-time actress. I knew it! Killer Bikini Bay from DEFCON 4. 
I knew I knew you from somewhere. I recognize that smoldering look you gave me when we first met. Uh, no. I wasn't in that one. And I definitely do not give you a smoldering look. More one of disgust. Bass Guitar Babes of Planet Speaker, the sequel? No, not that one either. (laughs) What did you star in? I was an extra for a time, in a little known vid series. Have you heard of Days of Our Afterroom Lives? Well, I played the cafe owner. Wasn't that the one where the main star died under mysterious circumstances? Well, uh... Yeah, I remember that one. Wasn't the rumor that he was poisoned? He drank something he wasn't supposed to while on set and died the next morning, if I remember correctly. Well, sometimes accidents can happen in the strangest of places. Suddenly, Rook awakes again. Yeah, alien! Quick, pass me my flamethrower! No, Rook, that's actually smoking. What? Oh yeah, it is. Sorry, smoking! Which reminds me, smoking. What's your story? What's something that many people know about you? My turn, then. You guys know that Rockvid star Lenny Kravitz the Ninth? The guy who wrote Is Your Ship Gonna Go My Way? <laughs> I I love that song. Don't tell me you're related. No, I was gonna say he punched me in the face once. Something about hitting on his girlfriend or something like that. I'm sure she was actually hitting on me though. And he didn't like that at all. So he came up to me and we had words. By words, you mean he smacked you around? Yeah, sure did. If you look close enough, you can still see the scar. I guess that leaves me. (laughs) Save the best till last, hey? (laughs) Um, Well, my name is Thomas, and I've never been married, featured in a vid, or smacked around by a rock star. I did write a best-selling book once, though. That's something. An action? Book? One with monsters and high-powered weaponry? A tale of lust? Uh, no. Complex mathematics, actually. All about an argument of a vector saving the world from a truly evil average rate of change. <laughs> Mathematicians couldn't get enough of it, apparently. One day, I'm gonna write the next one. All about an antiderivative of a function being free. As Thomas continues free. to explain her latest work involving complex mathematical terms that go completely over my head, Unit 6 suddenly has a brilliant idea. Uh, hey, here's a brilliant idea. Why don't we play some cards? I told you it was a brilliant idea. Have you got a deck of cards handy? Well, kind of. Unit 6 opens a compartment on his chest to reveal a large pile of, well, completely random cards. Some are actually playing cards. Others are random IDs and membership cards. How did he come by such a collection? It's amazing what you find on a bar floor sometimes. I think there is at least four and a half almost decks in this lot. Who's up for a few hundred games of poker version 2.0 to kill some time? (laughs) So there's more than a fair chance we'll end up with a full house of threes? It's more than likely. So the team settle down to play, to the best of their, and the cobbled together deck's ability. Yes, I don't think you're all going to beat four threes in a mercurial pilot license. Well, that depends. How much is a pair of Jupiter Gym membership cards worth? Not as much as three ambulance free ride cards. Read them and weep. Five threes and four guys with crowns and mustaches. Nine cards. I think we might have to go over how to play this game again for smoking's sake. At that very moment, an alarm goes off on the panel and a spinning light emerges from the ceiling and starts to spin. Fun at washing machine sales, not fun in a tiny ancient little shuttle. Ooh, danger? Are we under attack? Are there any weapons on this thing? Dibs on the heavy ones! Maybe it's aliens. Sexy aliens? Please let them be sexy aliens with like three breasts and at least two rear ends. Man, do you need therapy? No aliens, I'm afraid. It looks like we finally arrived. We're coming into land. (laughs) Welcome to our home for the next five years. The team cram up together around the very small viewing window to watch the ugly grey base and an equally ugly grey moon come into view. They're as disappointed as a vegetarian at an all-you-can-eat barbecue. The shuttle lands and an oxygen tunnel emerges from the base to connect it with our intrepid crew slowly walking forward to what will be their new home for the next five years. There really isn't anything out there, is there? Just 
Moon rock. No life. No beer. They stop at the main door, and as soon as Smoking presses the hatch access button, a dusty vid screen boots to life completely. <laughs> with a very pirate-like digital face. Yarrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr